Kahuna. <laughs> To give credit where credit is due, this idea actually came from another YouTuber, T-Bone FPV. So, thank you to him for this idea. Today we're going to be building our own battery for our FPV goggles. This is an Eosheen 800 and a Fat Shark 1800, and both of these work fine. I use this in my Eosheen VR 007 goggles, and I use this these in my Fat Shark HD2 goggles. But the problem is, is that this is only 1800 milliamps. Milliamps are how you measure the capacity of a battery. So based on the rating of this one being 800 and this being 1800 this should last more than twice as long as this one if they were both plugged into the same pair of goggles this battery however is 3200 milliamp hours and this thing should last a lot longer than both of these other goggles uh, once we have this battery finished building how are we going to charge it well i have here an imax b6 adac uh, battery charger and most of your battery chargers that people use probably look like this they have the uh, up down and the battery type and start and all these buttons anyway we'll go through the setup on this charger here in a few minutes after we get this new one built so we can make sure that you're charging it correctly now the first thing we do when we get started is we need to have two 18650 batteries 18650 batteries can either be purchased online from places like Amazon or Banggood or places like that or you can take an old laptop battery such as this one that's no good and I push this button and nothing happens. And inside here are actually six 18650 batteries. Well, the reason this is no good is because one of those batteries has dropped its voltage down because it went bad for some reason, and it's probably registering one or you know two volts. Well, these should be about 3.7, just like a just like a lithium uh, polymer battery. Well. This is not lithium polymer, this is lithium ion. Lithium ion can pack more milliamps into a smaller space than lithium, than lithium polymer. But the only disadvantage of these is that they can't discharge at such a high rate like a lithium polymer can. So if you're doing high discharge stuff like flying your quads, you don't want to use lithium ion batteries. You will over discharge these and they'll get real hot and <laughs> bad things will happen. So the first thing we need to do though is make sure that the two batteries that you picked out are good. And the, re the way you can do that is set your multimeter down to like 20 and then check the battery charges here. We can see this one is 4.03 and this one is about 4.13. So we know both. Whoa. So we know both of these batteries are good. So we'll go ahead and we'll use these batteries. The other thing you're going to need is a 2S balance port. A 2S balance port looks like this. You can pull it off of your old 2S battery that's no good, or you can buy them off eBay like I did. This came in a 10 pack. And you also need a plug, a 12 volt plug like this. And I got the 90 de the 90 degree turn just because it'll make it a little bit more convenient plugging into your goggles. And on this side, it just has the bare wires. So the first thing you want to do is tape these two batteries together. At least I like to. And we want to put the positive on one side, the negative on the other side, so that they're like this. Then I have this old wire I cut off of one of my uh, uh, ESCs, and we're going to solder it across the two batteries like this. Okay, not one of my best soldering jobs, but it will do. So I have both of those soldered together. Now the next thing we need to do is solder on the um, plug like this and our balance lead. Now how long do you, does the balance lead need balance lead need to be? Well, it doesn't matter, but I'd say you know something about like this, maybe about like that much hanging off the end of it or so, just so that you have something to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these off right here because they're all going to be at least this short. I like to cut this off about 105 millimeters and that should be long enough for this project. Now this is actually going to solder on to not this side where we soldered those. It's going to solder on to both of these up here and what will happen is the voltage will come in and around like this and that way you're getting your 3.7 plus your 3.7 so you're actually getting 7.2 volts of output. I stripped this wire back about 30 millimeters to get enough uh, length in these two wires to um, solder on to the batteries. Now I'm going to have it go like this so the battery, this one, the black one is going to go across over here to the negative over here and the red is going to solder directly on to the positive here. Now also at the same time, this, this is also going to solder on. You want to solder the two reds together and you want to solder the yellow and the black together to go over to the other uh, lead on the battery. And the middle black wire, actually this in this case this is what my wires look like, so 
you don't get yours backward or anything. The middle wire needs to go solder down and connect onto the, um, you can put it on the negative or positive down here, it doesn't matter, but we're gonna solder it onto the negative down here on the bottom along with this here. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this through and get this stripped off, tinned up, and soldered onto the bottom connection. Because I know someone's gonna ask, this cable, I ended up cutting it about 120, but you should probably cut it about 130 millimeters maybe. Anyway, got these all tinned up so they're ready to solder on. I got the batteries tinned up, so I'm gonna go ahead and start soldering these on and hopefully not melt the other wires into it. So we'll see how it goes. So here we go, Plug in, go ahead and solder this on. And I also need to make sure that when I'm soldering this that I'm making the wires all come the same direction like this way because this is where all the wires are going to come when I go to uh, put the heat shrink on. I want all the wires coming the same direction. I almost forgot that. Glad, glad I thought of that. Okay, so we're going to all come off this direction. So go ahead and melt this and get it on. All right, so the soldering is done and this is almost finished. Now we just need to put the uh, shrink wrap and other electrical tape on this to keep stuff from shorting out. So I'm going to cut off a couple of pieces of tape here real quick. So we're just going to put some tape over these to keep them from having any issues shorting out wise, anything like that. Put one on, we're going to put one on each of the ends of, this, of these batteries. And how long these are is, doesn't matter as long as it covers up the end. So there we go. Now the battery is really almost finished. And this is where I was talking about you want all the wires coming out the same side. That way you can heat shrink this and it will sit in your goggles uh, strap like this. And that way these wires are up here on the top. So the next thing we need is some 40 millimeter heat shrink like this. And I recommend cutting this about 100 a uh, hundred um, and five millimeters long. And I already have this thing set to 105, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this off the right length. And we'll slide this battery into it. And we're gonna try to center this kind of in the middle. And what we're gonna try to do here is make, create like a little hook on either side or a U shape on either side. And that way when the strap goes around, it won't have a tendency to fall out of there. So the next thing we need to do is heat shrink this up and yeah, I could use another 10, 10 millimeters of length on that, but that's all right. I got it centered, so we'll go ahead and heat this up and start forming it to the shape that we want. While this is still warm, we wanna go ahead and push this down and start forming this a little bit into the U shape that we want on this because like I said, we want this to be U-shaped so it kind of holds onto the strap of your goggles and doesn't fall out. Now I got my hot glue warming up and then we're gonna take this and we're gonna hot glue this, we're gonna put some hot glue inside here, glue this down, put a little hot glue on top and glue this down and that'll help hold it in place. So I got the first bit of hot glue in there and I'm pressing it down and it kind of dried a little bit so go ahead and put the next bit of hot glue in here. I'm gonna spread it around a little bit because we want this to hopefully stick down. We'll lay this down on top of it. It's going to be a little warm, but you just got to deal with it. And if it's not pliable like it should be, then you can heat it up with the heat gun. So here's the battery and it's all finished. You can see some of the hot glue. You can clean that up a little bit when you do yours. But it has that little U shape on this side and a U shape on this side. And like I said, that's to help hold it into your headband while you're going. Now before you go and hook this up to your uh, goggles and fry them, you want to make sure you got the uh, connections correct. So here I'm going to lay this down and I got the um, little metal pins up here on the top like this. So in this case, it's yellow, black, red on mine, but the little metal pins are up on the top. So we wanna check the voltages on these, uh, see if we can read these cells correctly. I'm gonna put the black one, the black or the negative on this yellow, and then put the 
red on the middle hey. one. So the first cell is reading 4.13. You want to take this and move it over to the uh, furthest pin, and you should be getting your full voltage. Yeah, 8.17. Like I said, this yellow one should be your ground because we soldered it directly to the ground inside here, same place as the black, black wire, so it should be good to go. Now the next thing we want to do is make sure that the uh, full voltage up here is reading correctly. We get positive and negative like this, and they are. It's actually reading eight volts. If it reads minus eight volts, then the wires that you have inside this thing are probably backward. If all your voltages are reading negative, then you probably have uh, your battery, the wires are soldered on differently. But like I said, this one is reading, yeah, eight volts when I push hard. And you wanna make sure this outside is ground. If this outside is positive, you're gonna fry your goggles. Don't do that. That's why I'm using the black one on the outside and the red one is on the inside where the positive is. Here's the Eoshin VR007, so I'll go ahead and plug this in. And look at that, we got video. Thank goodness it didn't go in backward. I'd hate to have to buy another set of these. But that's how you can make this uh, 32 milliamp hour battery. And like I said, you could leave a little bit more on top of here. This is 120 uh, millimeters. You could do 130 or 140 if you wanted it to be real long, depending on your own preference. But I didn't want this very long because I don't want it dangling and hit me in the head uh, when I'm having it up on the goggle things. So now let's take a look at how you're supposed to charge this. So here's this IMAX B680 charger. And inside of it, it comes with, of course, the charger here. Let me get this out of the package. Looks like this. And you'll notice this one has the direct plug into the wall, so it's, a, it's an AC or a DC charger. So you can plug it into your, have it connected directly to your battery or the wall. And over here is the balance port lead and the two uh, charger ports. But in, included with this are some cables. And these come with uh, T connectors. And this T connector here is what comes with. Oh, and this is the one that I was going to show you. This is the one where you plug this into your charger right here. Then you can plug these and or take these ends and connect them directly to your battery in your car. And that way you can charge at the field using a charger just like this. Now this also comes with the power cord to plug it into the wall and we'll I'll plug that in here in just a second. It also comes with this uh, lead here. And this allows you to charge 2S, 3, 4, 5, and 6S batteries with this connector. And you need to plug it in to the connector here, if I can do it while it's on camera, without breaking anything, there it goes. And then take, now for, to charge these batteries with this kind of bullet plug here, you're gonna need a bullet plug adapter like this. And I, I've never seen a charger actually come with one of these. I had, these actually came with my Fat Shark goggles, so that's what I'm using. So these just plug into the two side connections on here. I like that. Let me get the cord plugged in and we'll see how, and we'll go through the menus on this charger. All right, I have the lights turned off so we can see a little better. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and plug this in to the uh, battery like that. Take this board that came with it, I'm gonna plug it into the 2S, and this is how it's gonna do the balance charging. So we got it plugged in, just like that, just like you would any other battery, and then we'll go through these menus. Now we wanna do a balance charge, so I push over to go to the uh, balance charge here, push enter, and what we're gonna do here is change this down to 3000 because these are 3000 milliamp hour batteries. Some of them might be 2800, some of them might be 32, but 3000 should be pretty safe. Then we're gonna go ahead and push enter again. Get over here, we're gonna change this down to 2S like this. Go ahead and push uh, start and hold it down. It's checked to make sure that it really is a 2S battery. And we go ahead and we start charging it. Now these are charged just like you would um, a normal LiPo battery. The voltages that are on a lithium ion battery are the same. They should be uh, 4.2 when they're fully charged and 3.7 is kind of in the middle and down to you don't want to run down less than three volts but most of your fast shark goggles and your Eoshin goggles they'll power off before it drains the cells because they have a low cutoff system in it. If you're flying some custom homemade goggles that don't power this off then you just want to be leery and check every so often on how much voltage is left in your batteries. Also on this charger, since we have the balance lead connected, we can push this right arrow key and we can see here on the screen that we have the two uh, batteries 
uh, getting, it's reading two battery voltages. The first one's 4.2 and the second one's one uh, 4.2, uh, 4.19 and 4.16. Okay, they're charging up pretty quick. Uh, now, if you didn't have the balance lead, the only thing this charger could do is just charge both of them. But the problem with that is it would never balance out the cells and so it might try to overcharge one and then you'd start running into problems. So you wanna make sure that you always balance charge these. So here's the car battery inside my car. And this side is the positive and this side over here is the negative. And if you don't, if you aren't sure, there should be a plus or a minus and this one's kind of buried underneath here, but this is the positive side. Don't get these backward. I don't know what will happen to your charger if you do. But hopefully it has built-in protection to uh, protect itself against reverse polarity, but just don't do it. This is the positive side, that's the negative side. And I have this cord, I'm gonna go ahead and pinch this on and hopefully we'll power up this charger and see the lights come on. So here you can see I have the uh, pos or the negative connected over here to the negative terminal, and I have the positive connected over here to the positive terminal. And they're just kind of pinched on there, and then right up here is the power plug. So let's go ahead and tr try to plug this in, and hopefully, hopefully it doesn't blow up, and hopefully nothing burns up or anything. Let's see, are you in the picture? Yeah, okay. So here we go, plug this in, and look at that, we have power. And it's, and it's just back to the same menus that we had before. So you can do this at the charging field and then plug your battery in, just like, like I showed a little bit ago. And go ahead and make sure it's on LiPo balance, three amps, 7.4 volts to us. Hold it down, battery check, wait, start, there it goes. And now it's charging my uh, new FPV goggle battery from my car battery and you can do this at the flying field and it is amazing and it can also work for your regular LiPo batteries as well. So that's the end of what I have to show you. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. I'll try to help you out as best I can. And hopefully you have as good luck with your batteries as I have mine. I have, I'm always surprised by how long this battery goes between charges, just because I'm so used to having to charge every time I go to the flying field. Anyway, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.